Alrighty. Hello. Um, in this video, we're going to look at setting up Service Commander and running a Node app under Service Commander. Um, Service Commander, for those that aren't aware, uh, basically is a process manager for IBM I. It's kind of similar to PM2 in the fact that it can host and manage processes under it, um, which is really nice, um, except really it's just more specific to IBM I because in, in the sense that it can also keep track of jobs in the traditional IBM I fashion. Now, we're not going to be worrying about the traditional stuff in this video. We're going to create a node app and run a node app and host it under Service Commander. So I have the repository up here um, and really we just need to get it installed first off. So um, what you can do is you come over to the releases. This is the way that I'm going to install it now because it's not available in the traditional YUM repository way quite yet as of this video, this version. Um, nonetheless, um, you can see here that you can download the RPM. And I already downloaded it here. But what you can do is you can use VS Code when you've made a connection. Um, and I went ahead and uploaded it to this directory. So it's, I've got it right here in my home directory right there. Now I haven't installed it yet. All I did was upload it. You can do that by right clicking on a directory, clicking upload. But now that I have the RPM in my home directory, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new um, bash shell connected to my IBM I. And if I do an LS, you can see that I have the RPM right there. So I am going to take that file. Well, I'm not gonna take it. I'm actually just gonna do yum install service commander and what that does is it goes ahead and installs the components needed for service commander it does all of the setup for us and so now for example we have access to sc and in this zoom it's it's not quite useful actually but maybe if i take that out a little bit there we go um but using the sc command shows us that we now have access to well the service commander really and so from here, I'm going to create a node app that will basically run a web server on the IBM I and, and serve up a web page. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new stream file here. Actually, I'm going to create a new directory first, and, it's, and I'm going to call it SC Demo. And I'm going to add SC Demo to my IFS shortcuts right here. This is where I'm going to create my node app. So I'm going to create a new stream file and I'm going to call it index.js. And I think I want to use express because it's just easier. So I'm going to CD into SC demo and I'm going to do npm install express. And while that installs, I'm going to fetch the hello world example for express. I already had the page up. I'm going to drop it in there. Now, I don't want to use port 3000. I actually want to make it configurable. So I'm going to make it an environment variable instead so it could be inherited. So I'm going to say uh, process.env.port. That's a traditional environment variable for node apps. Um, cool. So now I'm going to run it to make sure it works. So um, I'm in the directory. I can see that I have my index.js and I'm going to do uh, port in uppercase equals 9333 node index.js. Okay, so now the app is running. Let's actually check if um, if we can reach it. So I have Thunder Client here, and I'll just use this, and I'll call port 9333. Let's just make this a bit smaller. Send. Okay, cool. So I have my Hello World response, and I have a Node app running on the IBM I, which is great. Now, just to really confirm it's true, let's just change this to video, and save it, and then restart the app and click send again. Cool, and we get hello video, as we'd expect. So the next part really is, instead of running it through my shell, we're gonna run it through service commander, so it's always running, even when I don't have a shell active. So um, as a backup, what I've got here is the guide, the actual hands-on guide to running um, service commander, and it basically tells you to create a shell script, but instead of a shell script, we have a node app, um, and then what we need to run it. So. Let's do that. Let's do SC. Now let's do port equals 9333 SC init node index. 
index.js. So we're telling the process that will run for this command to call sc init, but the parameters to sc init is node index. So we're telling it how to start on our node app. So if we click enter on that, it's asking me, would I like this service to be available to all users? I'll just leave the defaults for that. The short name will be sc demo. The friendly name will be service commander node app. And must the application be started in the current directory? Yes. If it runs under a unique job name, what is it? Well, I don't have one, so I can leave it. What ports does your application run on? 9333. Will your application need to be submitted to batch? No, not as such. Will your application need to run with the path and Java home values of the current process? Let's just say yes. What other environment variables from this process should be used? Well, we want to use port because we want the port that we give it 933 to be inherited into the app. So we'll just say that. And what groups uh, would this application be part of? And we don't have any. What services does it rely on? None. Okay, so let's see what that just did. Let's close, uh, let's not close it, but let's make this just a bit bigger for now. So um, defined in this path, so let's just copy that and open that file up. So this is the file that it created here. So it's got the name, the directory, the command that we started with, that's what we passed in. That's the port number, the check alive, batch mode, false, environment variables, that's nice. So start wait time 60 seconds and batch mode is not running in batch. So what if we do sc info sc demo? What happens then? So it just gives me the same information. That's okay. So what about if we do sc start sc demo? Okay, it says it successfully started. So in theory, if I call my node app, I get hello video. That's pretty neat. Well, what other ports, what other commands can we do here? So log info from an SSH terminal run, and this will give you the command that will be, oh, so okay, so I can actually just do sc log info, that's ah, the second parameter, log info uh, sc demo. Okay, so I guess it's running, but it's not writing anything to the actual uh, script, that's cool. That's pretty neat, we'll try that one again in a minute. We can stop it with stop, so let's do sc stop sc demo. Oh, it even gives you the uh, command it uses to end the app, that's nice. Um, okay, cool. So let's, so now if we call it, it's not running. That's pretty neat. Okay, well, we just run a node app with service commander. That was pretty neat. So let's try this. Let's do hello service commander and let's do sc start sc demo. All right, now it's running. There it is. That's pretty cool. So what other things can sc do? Let's have a look here. So we got start, stop, job info. Let's do um, sc uh, job info, sc demo. Let's see what that tells us. So it just tells us what job it's running under. That's pretty neat. So what about if I just run job info? Okay, so nothing, yeah, okay. So you have to give it a specific name. Okay, I thought there would be more. I thought um, there's another command that I'm looking for actually. So there's the installation, the basic usage. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Environment variables, start, stop, check. Check the status of all the configured services. That was pretty much what I was looking for here. So SC check. Check SC demo. SC check group all. Okay, so I have to use group all in order to get a list of all the services running. That's okay, that's pretty neat. SC start all, info all, that's pretty neat. And of course, if you have a group, you can see the group of them. So what if I do SC list group all? Nice, that's pretty cool. And of course, let's just do the stop SC stop sc demo and then do sc check group all 
not running. Pretty neat. I'm impressed. That's pretty cool, actually. It's a lot more, It's it responds a lot quicker than PM2 does. I know that much. Well, I think that's, that's pretty much the entire video. It really was quite short, but um, it was really cool to finally do a video and try it out. So hope it was useful. Thanks so much for watching.